Hey guys, what's up? I'm CJ and welcome back to my galaxy. Today we're discussing everything you need to know before watching The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. So this video won't contain spoilers for Songbirds and Snakes, the novel specifically. I have not watched the movie yet myself, but this is everything I know from the novel that you need to be able to just have a little bit of a refresher on what happened in the original four movies. The movie specifically, I won't be going into anything about the books, you know, anything that's too different. And this refresher essentially might even help you find little easter eggs while watching the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes as well, which I will be personally looking for. There's a couple easter eggs that I've seen in the trailer already that I'm like really excited for just to see in the movie, but anyway, let, let's get into what everything you need to know. I will also be doing a very, very quick plot recap of the really important characters and plot points of the original four movies at the end of this video. So if you want to have that bit of a refresher, stay till the end of the video. So the most important aspect that you need to understand about going into this movie that it is literally a prequel. It is set 65 years before the quarter quell, the play, the when the cat when catching fire takes place. This is also during the year of the 10th Hunger Games and all new cast except aside from Snow and Tigress. Tigress being in Mockingjay, she helped Katniss and that whole team with Peter and Gale and Cressida, that whole film crew. She hid them in her basement in the movies. Um, you know, the woman who has, she she literally, literally looks like a tiger. She pulls back that hood. She is in this movie and she's also in Mockingjay. And when I say Snow, I mean Car President Coriolanus Snow. I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Coriolanus. I'm waiting for the movie specifically uh, to really get a hold of what the pronunciation is, but I'm pretty sure it's President Coriolanus Snow. Uh, Coriolanus, God damn it. Damn it, no. Whatever Phoenix says in Mockingjay part two, Part one. Towards the end of Mockingjay part one, that's how you pronounce it. He pronounces it correctly in Mockingjay part one. Because this is taking place in the year of the 10th Hunger Games, we have gone and passed the Dark Days, although there are remnants of the Dark Days still around in Songbirds and Snakes. So uh, I thought I'd give you guys a bit of a refresher of the Dark Days. Uh, essentially, they are. it was an uprising, a rebellion similar to what we see in Mockingjay in the original movies. 13 districts rebelled against the capital. There were 13 districts when the rebellion started and 12 when it ended. There were only 12 when it ended because I shouldn't be smiling for that, but I'm trying to seem enthusiastic. Anyway, I'm trying to seem enthusiastic. Moving on, there were 12 when it ended, when the rebellion ended because the capital destroyed district 13, which was the start of the end of the rebellion that resulted in the Hunger Games. At the end of the Dark Days, what they call the Treaty of Treason was signed and the Hunger Games was born as a punishment for the districts. The Treaty of Treason is mentioned at the beginning of the first Hunger Games. It's the like the title sequence. It gives you a bit of writing on screen and they talk about how the Hunger Games came to be. That little bit of a refresher, hopefully you guys remember what the Dark Days is and that District 13 is gone, but we eventually know that District 13 is in fact alive and well, well not so well in Mockingjay because Katniss is there in Mockingjay. Another important point about the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes is the point of view that it's in in the books and it won't be translated in the same way as it on screen but I'm just mentioning in the books because this is how it's translated on screen in The Hunger Games, the original movies. It is from a first person perspective from Katniss Everdeen and thus we get a lot of Katniss's story on screen and it is still in a way from her point of view with little um like sometimes we'll see Snow and Seneca Crane talking and sometimes we'll see President Snow, Plutarch, that sort of thing. Uh, but it's mostly from the perspective of Katniss. But in this prequel, because it is a third person point of view in the book from Snow's, uh, from Snow's story, what we're going to see on screen is President Coriolanus Snow, I pronounced it wrong again, Snow's rise to power and his story. You know, how did Snow become the person we see in the original movies and books? This part is so you can understand the uh, little Easter eggs that are coming up. I know that we've all heard The Hanging Tree from Rachel Zegler's point of view because it's been trending everywhere. It was in the trailer, it was in the second trailer. So what I wanted to point out, from what I know from the books, what you want to do is go back and listen to all the songs Katniss sings in the original movies 
which are, from my knowledge, from what I can remember, Deep in the Meadow, which she sings to both Prim and Rue. She sings to Prim when she has a nightmare at the beginning of Hunger Games and Rue as she's dying. The Hanging Tree is, as well, you want to listen to that one in full and both of the songs in full. The Hanging Tree, specifically in the original movies, is sung uh, essentially as like a proper propaganda video and Snow eventually listens to it as she is, the, they kind of um, bring up the propaganda video as they're trying to get through to Snow when they're rescuing Peter, Joanna, Annie during Mockingjay part one. So eventually Snow hears this uh, hanging tree song and speaks to Katniss and that, that kind of antagonizes him to really punish Katniss in a way in Mockingjay. So listen to the songs in full, trust me, you won't regret it. All right, now onto a little bit of a plot recap. Once again, this isn't going to be a full plot recap. I'm just going to go through some major plot points and characters that you'll need to just have a bit of a refresher on when when you're watching Some Quads and Snakes. I don't know why, it, okay, moving on. All right, starting with the first Hunger Games movie, we get an introduction to what the games actually are. Uh, what it is is that I think if you're watching this, you probably know already, but just in case, just in case you're watching this because one of your friends dragged you to Songbirds and Snakes and you got to watch something beforehand. The Hunger Games is essentially two tributes from each of the 12 districts. One boy, one girl gets reaped during a reaping day and is sent to the capital and is trains for a week, does a Caesar Flickerman ish, uh, interview, issue, yeah, interview, and goes into the Hunger Games to fight to the death until one lone victor remains. The Hunger Games takes place during the 74th Hunger Games where Katniss Everdeen and Peter Malark get raped and go to the capital and meet a bunch of different characters, which I will mention who the notable characters are. So these are the people, remember all the, ca the capital people's names and their last names specifically. President Coriolanus Snow, Seneca Crane, Hamish Abernathy, Effie Trinket, Candace Everdeen, Peter Malak. I, I don't know why I'm reading this because I know, I know who they are. Um, <laughs> doesn't matter. Gail Hawthorne, Rue, Kato, the careers in general, Marvel, Glitter, Glitter. I keep saying that. Glimmer, Clove. Those are the career tributes, Kato, and during the Hunger Games. The career tributes are essentially those stronger districts and um, also Primrose Everdeen. I, I needed to look like, anyway. I keep getting distracted. Primrose Everdeen is the younger sister of Katniss Everdeen, obviously. Um, as with the careers, as I said, that is an important thing to note because in the Hunger Games, we have District 1 and 2, who are the strongest, uh, essentially, uh, districts because they have like more food, more connection to the capital, specifically district in, okay, in the books, District 4 is also a career tribute, um, you know, career district, um, but, Finnick tribute, uh, career tribute, but not in the movies. Specifically District 2, interesting, uh, is, interestingly enough, uh, District 1 is not um, held in such a high regard as District 2. District 2 has quite the connection with the capital. So generally, tributes will be a lot stronger in District 2 because they've trained for so long go, and have prepared their entire lives um, for the games, uh, Kato and Clove. Uh, Kato was in the final three and they are both from District 2. Also Caesar Flickerman, I forgot about him. Caesar Flickerman, also an important character. The way in which Katniss and Peter win during the games is using Nightlock Berries. Nightlock Berries, they kind of uh, psych. You thought we were gonna kill ourselves with the Nightlock Berries to try and uh, um, get Seneca Crane to announce them both as the winners so one didn't have to kill the other. In this movie, we are also introduced to the concept of mutts. One mutt is called the Jabba Jays. They were genetically engineered during the dark days and they were eventually released into the wild once they backfired on the capital and um, uh, district rebels started using them to give them fake intel to the capital. So the Jabba Jays, Jabba Jays were released into the wild and eventually bred with mockingbirds to create a mocking jay. Mocking jays are kind of half capital, half district in that way. And of course, Katniss kind of becomes a mocking jay symbol. She's very much connected to mocking to the mocking jay as there begins to be unrest and uprising because Peter and Katniss pulled this kind of defiant 
act to win their games. The Catching Fire movie goes across the Victory Tour for Katniss and Peter and the Quarter Quell. The Victory Tour essentially shows us what the uprising is looking like in each district. District 11 is one of the first to uprise to have that sort of unrest. Snow makes it very clear at this point that Katniss needs to prove to him that she is actually in love with Peter but no matter what she does she does not convince him because obviously President Carolina Snow is the worst antagonist ever. He is a dictator. He is trying to keep his power and Katniss is a threat to that and so are her Mockingjays. Thus, the Quarter Quell is rigged. What well, if you don't know what the Quarter Quell is, is it happens every 25 years and this going to the 75th Hunger Games, it's another 25 years. So the Quarter Quell is happening in the 75th Hunger Games. It essentially says a different rule change. So the capital can essentially say you don't it's a reminder that you don't have power over us so every 25 years they change the rules a little bit in the 25th the districts had to elect their own tributes they weren't reaped they were selected by the the districts themselves to go into the arena which can you imagine that just being selected by your district to go in i Hopefully they're selecting the strongest, at least some of the districts, not the people they hate. The 50th Hunger Games was the one Haymitch won and essentially they put in double the amount of tributes, so normally it's 24. There were 48 tributes that Haymitch had to outlive for his games, yet he became the victim because he's cool and Haymitch Abernathy. The 75th Hunger Games reaped their tributes from the uh, remaining pool of victors. Katniss and Peter both go back into the arena and it's in the capital during the lead up to the quarter quell where we meet Finnick, Joanna, Mags, Beatty, Wyrus, Plutarch Heavensby. Plutarch Heavensby is the new game maker for the 75th Hunger Games to replace Seneca Crane because he was killed. I don't know if, we, if I mentioned Mags also. Mags won the games following the 10th Hunger Games, the one we're about to watch. So she won the 11th Hunger Games. By the end of Catching Fire, we realized that there was a rebellion plan to make sure Katniss and Peter get out of the games alive. And that Plutarch Heavensby is on the rebellion side and not the capital side. One other thing that we find out that is just a bombshell, literally capital, tw capital 12, district 12 was bombed and everyone, Gail got them all out and they ended up in District 13, which is alive and well, kind of, not well. I keep saying that, not really well. District 13 is underground and in hiding. And that is where they're taking, they're taken to in Mockingjay Part 1. During Mockingjay Part 1, we spend most of our time in District 13, where we meet characters such as President Coin and Boggs. Boggs is good, President Coin not so much. Candace becomes the Mockingjay, uh, the official Mockingjay, the official face of the rebellion during this, uh, during this movie, and she visits District Twelve, the remains of District Twelve, and she visits visits District Eight, so they can essentially uh, film real life propaganda videos to send off to the capital. When they go back to District 12, they go to District 12 twice, once for Katniss to see the remains, twice to get another propaganda video, I'm pretty sure. In the books they do at least. And while they're there, Katniss sings to one of the AVOXs that are on the film crew. I cannot remember his name at this point, but it, it doesn't matter. This AVOX asks Katniss to sing to the Mockingjays, so the Mockingjays repeat after her. What she sings is the Hanging Tree, and the Mockingjays repeat that they film it. And as they're trying to get Peter out, did I mention earlier that Peter got um, captured by the Capitol? He is not in District 13. They're going to get Finnick, BT, and Katniss out. And then Joanna, Annie, Annie, who was Finnick's girlfriend, lover, wife, whatever. And Peter, Joanna, Annie, Peter, they're all in the Capitol. So when they're trying to get these characters out, they play The Hanging Tree in a propaganda video and which captures the attention of Snow. And like I said earlier, this essentially is Snow getting back at Katniss for rebelling against him. And she and he kind of freaks her out, essentially, that they know that they're in there trying to get Peter and Joanna and Annie out of the capital. Mockingjay part one ends with a hijacked Peter in the in District 13 and essentially he thinks Katniss is a mutt and Katniss thinks Peter is a mutt and it's like kind of a circle. Um, with how they think of each other. Mockingjay Part 2 mostly takes place in the capital as they are continuing to push back against the capital and the rebels are beginning to win. So we see President Coyne allow, well, allow Katniss to go to the capital and fight against 
the president Snow. This is essentially Snow's downfall. This entire movie is Snow just losing. Snow literally falling during this movie. Remember that? <laughs> Not funny. Not funny. This movie is also, like I said earlier, where we meet Tigress. Tigress helps, like I said earlier, once again, Tigress helps Katniss get into well, she hides them until they can get to the president's house. And finally, at the end of Mockingjay Part 2, we see Peter and Candace after the war kind of grow back together. And then there's a cute little epilogue of them sitting in the meadow outside of District 12, where the boundaries would have been blocking them from going into the meadow previously. And they have their own little kids and it's adorable. They grew back together and they found peace in the life of Victor after the war. Alright guys, that was a quick little plot recap for you, so hopefully it makes sense. And everything I said, that everything you need to know before watching Songbirds and Snakes, hopefully you guys enjoyed that and it is very useful for you when watching Songbirds and Snakes and you're able to see any Easter eggs that you want to see and that is a quick little great refresher for the movie when you watch it. If you guys have read the books and you want to comment like anything you think people should know before watching the movies please leave them down in the comment section below if, if they're helpful no spoilers though we don't want any spoilers for the movies yet or if you come back to this video and say like hey this video really helped me thanks so much for giving us the little refresher um i'd really appreciate that so come back to this video after the movie if you very well want to. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. I will be posting Hunger Games content every Friday from now on, and hopefully you guys have enjoyed the past two weeks of my videos. I know a lot of more people have been joining us, so hopefully you guys are here to stay and are, and are enjoying my content. Once again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I have been CJ, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!